Hello everyone, this is Ishan and I love economics. Today I'm going to talk about an economics concept that many find a bit confusing. It's the difference between demand supply and the quantity demanded and quantity supplied. I'll be showing a few scenarios, drawing a few diagrams to clarify the concepts as well. So firstly, let's go through the law of demand and supply. It's a very simple law to understand. According to the law of demand and supply, if prices go up, right, if prices go up, the quantity supplied also increases, whereas the quantity demanded decreases. Now bear in mind, for this law to hold, everything else should remain constant or it should not change. So the only factor that changes is price of the product in question and nothing else. Now why do people buy less of the product if the prices go up? Well, think about it uh, in your real life. Imagine the product that you buy on a regular basis, if the price of that product increases, you'll probably continue buying it, but maybe ration it a bit. Maybe adjust it to suit your budget, so buy a little less. Similarly, from a supplier's point of view, if the price of a product increases, they would want to sell more because that will mean they can maximize, they can increase their profits. Now, what we are speaking now is the law of demand and supply. And the only factors that change here are the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Please don't mix them with demand and supply. Quantity demanded and demand are two different things. Quantity supplied and supply are two different things as well. But what is the difference? Is it just the term quantity? No, it's more than that. Let's understand what's the difference in demand and quantity demanded. Now, demand literally means more people will, uh, demand actually means who, which people buy the product, okay? Who buys the product? Do more people buy the product or do less people buy the product? I'll give an example. So let's say a product, uh, the price of a particular product increases, what's gonna happen first of all? If the price of that product increases, one, the quantity demanded will decrease, but it will not affect the demand. For the demand to change, it has to be some other factor apart from price. So let's say research, okay? Let's say you drink Pepsi, okay? If the price of Pepsi goes up, you'll still drink Pepsi, but maybe a bit lesser. Okay, you may buy lesser cans on a weekly basis. But imagine, a research shows that Pepsi uses lesser chemicals than Coke. Well, just a made up example. In that situation, you would go, well, Pepsi is using lesser chemicals, Pepsi is less harmful for our health. In that situation, it's the demand for Pepsi that will increase, not the quantity demanded. So that's the main difference. Let's look at the reverse example. Let's say, Coke, okay, for Coke there is a research that gets published that says Coke has harmful chemicals for the body that could be cancerous. In that situation what will happen is the demand for Coke will decrease, not the quantity. So there you go, if it is quantity demanded, then it has to be the price of the product. If it is demand, it has to be other factors because what was the law of demand and supply? If everything remains constant, so if that constant part does not hold, it is the demand that is being affected. Also, when we say there is an increase in demand, we mean more people who were not using the product before are now using the product. So there could be a research that says Pepsi is wonderful for health. It's not true, but let's say a research says it's so good, it's even better than a few fruit juices, uh, which are packed, packed fruit juices, okay? Um, in that situation, some people who don't drink Pepsi before will start drinking Pepsi. That means they are now entering the market in which they were not a part of before. This means Pepsi has an increase in demand. Similarly for supply, if the price goes up and everything else remains constant, the quantity supplied will increase. But when does supply increase? Not the quantity, but supply itself. Well, think about it like this. If more sellers enter the market, there'll be more people producing a particular product, then we would say supply increases. Or one of the major, major factors that affect supply are the costs of production or the cost of manufacturing. 
if the cost of production increases, it's, it, it, it's basically for a supplier, they're spending more money to make a product. It's expensive to make the product. So in that situation, if cost of production is increasing, the supply will decrease. Well, as if, uh, if, if a particular supplier or a manufacturer is able to save cost on a particular manufacturing process, let's say they can produce more efficiently, they get a new technology, or their workers are more skilled or more efficient, whatever reasons, let's say government um, gives them a discount on certain products. For whatever reasons, if the cost of production decreases, it's cheaper to produce. So in that situation, you would say supply is now going to increase. Also bear in mind, when we talk about demand increasing, it is shown by a shift in the demand curve to the right side. And if you say demand decreases, it is shown by a shift in the demand curve to the left side. As far as supply is concerned, if supply increases, the supply curve will shift to the right. And if supply decreases, supply curve will shift to the left. That's all for now. Now let us look at the diagrams and a few scenarios for the shift in demand and supply and a simple movement along the curve for changes in prices and quantity demanded and quantity supplied. Okay, now let's look at a few diagrams here to understand demand and supply and the difference in quantity demanded and quantity supplied. Let us draw a regular demand and supply diagram first. This is your price, here is your quantity, this is your downward sloping demand curve and your upward sloping supply curve. The point where they meet is the point of equilibrium, that's where the market clears. So that gives you equilibrium price over here and an equilibrium quantity down here, EP and EQ. It means at this particular price, and this particular quantity, the market will clear, quantity demanded will meet quantity supplied. Let's say now the price goes up for this product. Let's say these are oranges. Let's say the price goes up to this point. Let's say this is the new price. The new price is here. Let's see what happens to the, your demand and supply. All right, so from here, let's see where this new price meets your demand and supply curves. It meets the demand curve over here at this point. So basically with the old price, the old price met your demand curve here, the new price met your demand curve here. This is called a movement along the curve. And this happens due to changes in price and price alone, nothing else. As a result, let's look at the new quantity demanded. This is your new quantity demanded right here. This was the old one. Okay, so what happens is when prices change, it is the change in quantity demanded similarly with the new price you have a new point on the supply curve this is also a movement from one point to another point and as a result we have a new quantity supplied so once again, changes in prices show changes in quantity supplied. And this fits the law of demand and supply. When prices go up, what's happening? Quantity demanded is decreasing, whereas the quantity supplied is increasing. So this was movement along the curve and changes in quantity demanded and quantity supplied. Now let's have a look at the change in demand and change in supply. Let's look at two scenarios. So let's draw four diagrams which will help us understand 
the four main changes in the market. So in this first situation, we're going to see when a demand increases. So demand increases. Please remember this is different to quantity demanded we saw before. So when does a demand increase? A demand would increase if there is a better research. Or a research that supports your product. Or if your rival increases their price. So let's say this is Pepsi. Let's say this is the market for Pepsi. If Coca-Cola increases the price, or if there is a better research or a positive research for in, in um, support of Pepsi, in that situation, we would say the demand increases. And this increase in demand is shown by a rightward shift in the demand curve. So this demand curve will shift to the right. New demand. This shows an increase in the demand with a shift to the right. We also have a new equilibrium point now. This was your old equilibrium point. Now we have a new equilibrium point. This is the old equilibrium price and the old equilibrium quantity. Now we have a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. Our equilibrium price has gone up and the equilibrium quantity has also increased. So this is what happens when demand increases. Now let's check a situation where the demand decreases. This is if you have a research against you or not in your favor or your rivals drop their prices. So once again, if this is Pepsi, and if Coke, if Coca-Cola drops the prices, what happens to the market for Pepsi? The demand curve decreases, the demand decreases. This is shown by a shift in the demand curve to the left, a leftward shift. So you have a new demand curve. This is not called a movement, it is called a shift. This was your old equilibrium price and old equilibrium quantity. Now we have, because of the shift, a new equilibrium price that is lower and a new equilibrium quantity that has also decreased. So that was your decrease in demand. Now let's look at supply. When will a supply increase? A supply will increase if your competitor well, not really to do with your competitor. We'll do the supply one again. It's okay. I'll start again. Now let's check. Now let's check when a supply will increase. So a supply basically increases if a complementary product that goes into the production, if the price of that product goes down, if your cost of production goes down or you have more suppliers in the market. If either of these conditions hold true, your supply increases. This is shown by a shift in the supply curve to the right. So you have a new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity. This is your old equilibrium price, your new equilibrium price, which has gone down. And this was your old equilibrium quantity. This is your new equilibrium quantity, which has increased. This is your increase in supply. Lastly, let's look at a decrease in the supply or when supply decreases. This happens when a complementary product that goes into your production has its price gone up or the cost of production goes up or simply 
sellers leave the market and you have less suppliers in the market. In this situation, the supply curve will shift to the left. It shifts to the left. This was your old equilibrium price. Now you have a new equilibrium price that has increased. This was your old equilibrium quantity. This becomes your new equilibrium quantity, which has also decreased. So basically, what we have seen so far is demand increases with a shift in the demand curve to the right. You have a new equilibrium price that goes up and a new equilibrium quantity that also goes up. When demand decreases, the demand curve will shift to the left. Your equilibrium price goes down and your equilibrium quantity also goes down. When supply increases, your supply curve will shift to the right. Your equilibrium price will go down, but your equilibrium quantity increases. And finally, when there is a decrease in supply, your supply curve will shift to the left. Equilibrium price increases, but equilibrium quantity decreases. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the concept of demand supply, quantity demanded, quantity supplied is now clear. If you like the video, please click on like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.